Oh, it's your day off. It is my day off. I'm really excited. <laughs> Bravo. You, you finally uh, got one. You finally got one. I know. It's been, it's been some time, but it was, it's been great so far. So it's fun. Touche. I'm just going to yeah. do this. Uh, All right. Welcome back to the Beyond the Check podcast. I'm Rashawn Parker. Today, we're going to be talking about what it's like to be a manager opening a brand new restaurant in a hotel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with uh, my lovely guest, Stevie Harris, who's coming to us from Nashville, Tennessee. But first, if you haven't already, please go watch my TV series, Beyond the Check Worker Owner Edition, now streaming on Amazon Prime and Tubi TV. Tubi TV, it's free TV. They should totally give me a dollar every time I say that, but they don't. <laughs> anyway, Stevie. Hi. Hi. I miss you. How have you been? I've been I've been great. I've been really <laughs> busy as of late. <laughs> um, uh, but I've been really good. How have you been? I'm good. Just hanging yeah. out. I bought a house. I know. I met your lovely wife in Savannah. Did she tell you she, when I was I was uh, down there last year and I came to eat at Belford's? No, she didn't. Hold on. Yeah. No, yeah. I um Jordan. I, <laughs> I saw I mean I'd seen her on Facebook and I was just like, hey. <laughs> you're Rashawn's um, yeah, wife. So she's super sweet. Huh? You're like, hey, you're Rashawn's wife. <laughs> yeah. I did, yeah. <laughs> nice. That's kinda how it happened. That was funny. Yeah. She might have, super and I just don't remember. That's quite possible. Yeah, that was a year. I mean it was a year ago. A year Over ago. a year ago. Yeah, because we know each other from working at Belford's together. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. 2014. Jesus, was it really wow. that long ago? Yeah, it was a long time ago. Damn it. I, mean, I moved back here in May of 2014. Wow, seven years. Long, it doesn't long, long seem time. like it's been seven years. And time flies. <laughs> it really does. Am it I, really does. Am I that much grayer? I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I was gonna say you look exactly the same. Well, thanks. You do too. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sunscreen. Sunscreen. Uh, uh, I'm trying to eat more vegetables. <laughs> Drink a lot of water. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, so in that last seven years, I guess let's, let's catch up real quick, and then we'll we'll get into what you're doing now. What? Oh yes. Yeah. So, yeah. How was that? How was Nashville? You left. You left Savannah. Seven years uh, yeah, ago. I left, I left Savannah. Um, I mean, Nashville has never stopped growing. It just gets, I, I swear, every every six months it's a new city, um, which is really, really great, actually. Um, you know, there's pros and cons to that. But for the most part, uh, I mean, if we're talking food and beverage wise, the scene has really, really started. You know, it's just it's just getting better all the time. There's more restaurants, more people coming here, which is kind of where, how I landed in this role that I'm in now. Um, which is great Good for you. Cause Savannah is exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's just, no, nothing, uh, I don't know. <laughs> nothing's really changed. I mean, a couple of restaurants have come and gone, but for the most yeah. part, they're all still there. Yeah. When I, when I was down there last summer, um, it was the first time I'd been back since I moved back here. And, uh, it seemed a little different, but it, it seemed a little cleaner. I will, I, I felt like it was like, it had cleaned up just a little bit. Everything looked a little more new, Okay, but it was, it was so very, very similar to what it was. It has, ex we have expanded down past Forsyth. So like yeah. the Starlin district, like I don't go downtown anymore. Like, uh, oh, it, really? like, like, no, I mean, no. But if we, so if I'm going to go out, we'll like downtown, we go to the Starland district. So like right past Forsyth, by, down by like Anderson Hall. And there's all these, wow. that is where there's like cool new places, right? So there's like all these little breweries and um, some cute little, like a really cute pizza shop called Squirrel's Pizza, which is, oh. first of all, it's called Squirrel's. So that's just adorable. And then, yeah. the pizza, and then they have the cut pepperoni, you know, like the pepperoni that like bubbles up into like the little grease bowl. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Old world style, old world pepperoni. Oh, that's cool. And then you can, see, and for a little while, you could drink and walk around there. And I think you still can, just just not legal. But nobody cares anymore. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know. 
You can always much. drink. A, you can always drink and walk around downtown, right? In Savannah. Yeah, but you could only go to Forsyth, and then. Oh, you could go like, past the. But now that everything's like all nicer and, you know. Yeah. Gentrified. I'll have to check that out next time I go because I don't. I don't think I ventured that far out. I didn't know that that existed. Oh, it's adorbs. It. It's adorbs. Yeah, I'll yeah. have to check that out. That sounds like something I would enjoy more than downtown. But it was still. I still really enjoyed going back to. Belfords, it was nice to see everybody, some people anyway. So um, it was good. They're not I don't hardly know anyone that works there anymore. Though so some of the people I, were still there, like Lawanda was probably there and Bianca was there. I can't remember who I saw while I was there. Um but I feel like I saw some people that I knew. I don't know. It was a long time. It was a year ago. <laughs> I don't remember anything. Andy's still there. That's all that matters. <laughs> I did not see Andy. I definitely wasn't that. <laughs> no, he's still there. He's he's still there. Yeah. Some things that he looks exactly the same too. That man doesn't age. He just got old and stayed that way. <laughs> if you're listening, Andy, you know it's true. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway. So uh-huh. you, you've been hanging out, you've been in the service industry the whole time you've been in Nashville? I mean, yeah, when I got back, um, I got a job with, I don't know, some like steakhouse that I worked at for like three years. And during that time, I uh, I was really trying to figure out what the hell I wanted to do with my life. And I kind of just was like, you know what, I'm really good at this. I think that it's, I mean, I really enjoy it. Um, and I was like, let's just see what happens. So I knew that I didn't want to grow with that company, so I moved on to a new one, um, and within a few months, I was promoted uh, to just like an hourly manager, and then kind of just started working my way up from there. Um, got really into wine and stuff, uh, so that's that was that was part of it that, you know, kind of helped push me along or like, you know, advance my career along. Um, was it hard trying to make the decision to like take did you did you get a raise when you came a manager or did you get um <laughs> uh, at first no um i did it uh, <laughs> it's a pay cut it's a pay cut really to go from a server or a bartender to a usually salaried manager who they're going to run and, to death yeah, yeah. <laughs> it definitely in the beginning it definitely was um but, you know, one of the reasons that I wanted to get into management was for career growth and development. And, and honestly, just a little bit of stability. You know, I was kind of, you know, you know how serving is. It's like one night you make yeah. 200 bucks. Next night, night you might make 50. That You know, you never know what's going to happen. So um, I You're really like, wanted stability. I'm going to climb the ladder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so that's what I started doing. And now I have to say that I, I don't know that I've taken that big of a pay cut. I've actually kind of, you know, I've, I've been fortunate and I've had some really good opportunity come my way. So um, right now I'm, I'm happy with my decision. <laughs> um, You're working your butt off, but you enjoy yeah, it. I work my butt off, but it's worth it. And uh, yeah, and it, it took a little while to get here, but it, again, it's worth it. It's, so you know, so let's let's tell everybody what what it is you are doing. What are you doing? So just for just for the sake of you know not getting myself in trouble for some things, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to name specific places or That's people. <laughs> I will say that you know how you know how that goes. Um, but I am currently the assistant general. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Oh, but you are in the process of opening a brand new restaurant and brand new restaurant and a brand new hotel. And, um, but I mean, I'll, I'll tell you details that might give you hints to what it is. <laughs> uh, but um, so I am the assistant general manager of a restaurant within a luxury hotel in downtown Nashville now. Um, the restaurant is uh, two times James, two time James Beard award winning chef. Um, really, really well respected hospitality group out of New York. Um that's bringing two concepts to a restaurant or a hotel down here. Um, so it's kind of weird because I, I work for the hotel, but I also work with this hospitality group. So there's like two entities that are kind of. About pulling you back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that kind of, that's kind of, it's been interesting to navigate that, but, um, but so far it's been, a, it's a really cool opportunity. So Yeah. That's, that's pretty much, that's what I'm doing. So you're in that's, charge of people. 
<laughs> I'm in charge of people. I'm in charge of, of booze. Uh, <laughs> I'm in charge of, you know, stuff. Um, but I, I don't really like to think about it that way. I, I like to think, you know, when I was a server, when I was a bartender, when I was a hostess, I've done ever, I've done all of it. Um, except back. I never, I never have been in back of house, which I actually kind of regret. I wish I, sometimes I look back and I'm like, Oh, I would have loved to be a pastry chef. Like <laughs> that would have been oh. really, you know, never too late, but I like playing, yeah, I, I like playing with knives too, but I don't, I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love, I mean, I really love pastries and it's really fun. I like baking. So I'm like, oh, that would have been a really cool thing to do. But um, <laughs> or maybe a little further along, you know. Uh, but, you know, when I think about it, I think about um, I think about the good management that I had and I think about the bad management that I had. And and, you know, there are some career servers. There are some people who do this for a living and that's how they pay their mortgage. It's how they how they feed their kids. But there's also people who are doing this just to get through school. There's a, people who are just doing this to make ends meet on the weekends or whatever. It's a su- it's supplemental income. And what I remember when I was serving and when I was that tipped employee um, is that it's, it's really difficult. I think hospitality is a really, really important industry. Um, we like, we're not saving people's lives. No, we're not in a hospital. We're not, you know, we're not operating on hearts or anything like that, but, but we, we serve are, a purpose. Yeah. But I mean, we're definitely enhancing the quality of life. My, some of my favorite memories are held in restaurants and in bars and in hotels or whatever. Um, and traveling you know, with your family. Exactly. Your yeah. And, and to be somebody who facilitates that, uh, especially from a management perspective, my main goal is not necessarily to be in charge of people, but it's to take care of the people who are taking care of people. Um, I think that's really important. And I think that people forget that a lot and it's really difficult to be hospitable and to treat people nicely when you walk through the double doors and you're getting yelled at and treated like shit all the time, (laughs) you know? So, uh, so I, I mean, I guess (laughs) that's kind of my own personal, like motivation. No, that's just good leadership. That's, that's good leadership. You're not a boss. You're the, you're a leader, you know, and if, you know, good leaders inspire, they don't put down. Yeah. And that's, that's my goal, you know? And, and that's, so I, so it is, it's kind of, it's weird to think that I don't, I don't think that at 15, if you would have told me that I would be a restaurant manager or hospitality manager of any kind, I would have probably laughed. I didn't ever want to do this. (laughs) I never thought I wanted to do this. Um, but now that I'm here, you know, I find a lot of purpose in it. And I think, um, you know, I have, obviously I go to therapy. I'm, I'm a big, <laughs> uh, I, I'm a big supporter of therapy, but, um, I have two dogs. They listen well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but my therapist and I have talked about it and it's like, you know, she said it and it sounds cheesy, but she was like, you know, sometimes you don't find your purpose. It kind of finds you. And that's kind of what happened to me in my life. And and I'm here and I, and I love my job. I can genuinely say I love going to work every day. I love the people I work with. Um, we have a ton of fun. It's a, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> they always end up like families, no matter how many there. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's a ton of employees around where you're at right now. Mm-hmm. What are you so do you know about? all their names or like, yeah, most uh, of their I names. know my, yeah. So my, the restaurant that I'm in, I, yes, I know everyone's name, but we, so it's the way that it's set up, the hotel is massive. And like, like for instance, I was there for 13 hours yesterday and I didn't step into the hotel once. I was just in my area. Like I'm in my kitchen, I'm in the restaurant on my little side of the world. Just getting everything ready, right? Like you're you're getting the, the kitchen ready to be open. Like you're not even open yet, right? We're not open, but we have officially started doing soft serve, like mock service and like soft opening. So we open this Wednesday. So, so we're in, yeah. Hmm? So maybe if it, I'm, I'm just curious, like <laughs> the preparations of like trying to get everything together to, oh. you know, to, for, can, are you in you try the front of the house and the back of the house? You're kind of overseeing all of it. Oh, no. I So I oversee primarily front of house. So the way that our management structure works, there's a general manager who's my boss um, and then myself and two people under me. Uh, and then obviously the rest of the hourly talent or right. that's what we call it, talent. If, talent. Yeah. Stars. <laughs> stars. <laughs> yes, stars. <laughs> um, but we have them. And then uh, in the back we have the, the management structure is, is – 
interesting because there's an executive chef of the hotel, an executive sous chef of the hotel, a CDC of our restaurant, a sous chef of our restaurant. A CDC is a chef de cuisine. Um, okay. So because our restaurant is technically a celebrity chef, uh, not right. his restaurant, right? it's not like... But it flows down the chain it. of command. Exactly. Right. So the CDC is basically hit, like, it's like, he's like the Pope. <laughs> he's like the Pope of the restaurant. <laughs> um, Copy that. Right. All, all hail, all hail. The yeah. Uh, and then, so it's kind of interesting. And then there's the other restaurant. There's a whole, that same management structure is mirrored on the other side. Um, and then the outlets of the hotel, which are all completely separate. We've got four other bars, I think, in the hotel itself. There's a whole separate management team for that and a whole separate culinary team for that. So. I have a super serious question. Yeah. <clears throat> so you're in Nashville. Yeah. Is there a musicians that are going to be in the bathrooms? <laughs> you say in the bathrooms? <laughs> yeah. I've always heard that Nashville, if you go to Nashville, there's even like like single guitar players in the bathroom sometimes. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Is that not true? Have people been lying to me? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, okay, so, all right. Have you ever been to Nashville before? No. Okay. <laughs> so na here's what here's Nashville. <laughs> that exists on there's this strip called Broadway, and Broadway locals don't go to Broadway. <laughs> no. The only people who go to Broadway are people who Damn. are no, yeah. So I I would imagine I don't know. I haven't been to Broadway, and I can't remember the last time I went to Broadway. I don't go there. I stay far, as far fucking. Away, away from Broadway as you fucking yes. can. <laughs> I, can't, I, cannot, I do not. That's I how I feel go. about downtown Savannah, but. That's, that's exactly, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like any, it's any town that, it, like any touristy kind of thing, like the people who actually live in that city Don't hate it. it. We yeah, hate that, it. Like, yeah. it's like, not it's going like to River Street, no. Yeah. yeah. It's, and you know, and it's what, it's whatever. I mean, it's cool. People have fun, but I just, so, I steer clear. Of if I go to Broadway though, and I go to the bathroom, there's you might, I might be serenaded. Yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming that that's probably where that happens. <laughs> but you will see, I mean, you will see, there's music everywhere. Pitch, pitch it to your um, bosses, see what they think, maybe. Literally, like, <laughs> this is going to sound so mean, but, like, those guys will find any fucking where to play, so I just <laughs> doubt it. There's so many of them. I mean, God. Find yeah. <laughs> if that's where they're going to be heard, they're going to fucking see <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh goodness gracious a tip's oh. a tip no matter where you get it uh, right <laughs> no matter where you get it <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious oh my gosh i'm gonna now i'm curious now i want to well, i'm gonna go to broadway just, just i'm just gonna check the bathroom so, can, I just, can i just see what's going on where's here? that music coming from <laughs> <laughs> serenading with the pukes yeah. <laughs> grow up like, uh, could you just stop playing the guitar long enough to hold my hair, please? Yeah, yeah seriously. That's, I mean, no, this is the bridge, man. Sorry. That's, <laughs> <laughs> I'm into it. that's hilarious. Um, but yeah, no, to answer the question, I really don't know. Right, well, but I, 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 now I'm going to find out. Okay, <laughs> let me know. Keep me updated. I will. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness gracious! Uh, um, so, um, since you don't go to Broadway uh, on mm -hmm. your days off, if you have them, well, currently you, you rest on your day off. But oh yeah, I slept like four hours. I just woke up <laughs> a little bit ago. Um, right. Where do uh, so thanks? Um, are you asked where I hang out? Like yeah. So what do you do for fun now when you do um, have time? Well, there's two little neighborhoods here that I absolutely love: East Nashville, which is where I live. I live kind of, I live a little outside of the East, actual East Nashville proper, but, um, that's kind of a local spot. I don't know that it'll ever be touched. Everybody's mean enough to keep the, the bad people away. I feel. <laughs> um, so you know when you're unwanted. You know, yeah. Yeah. We, we don't, yeah. <laughs> seriously. It's, uh, yeah, we're not, we're not quiet about it. Um, and then there's Germantown. Germantown's one of my new favorite, um, uh, neighborhoods here, one that's like really coming up. Um, and it's October. Really, I mean, huh? And it's October. 
Yeah, I know. There will be an Oktoberfest at some point. I don't know when it is, and I'm probably not going to get to go, but uh, I'll see the pictures on Instagram and be jealous like I am every other year. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, on my days off, I honestly, I love to go. I love to eat. I, you know, I'm in a restaurant all the time. It's nice to be on the other side of the table. So that's usually what I try to do. Yeah. Spend time with my dogs, hang out, you know, um, Right now, I'm trying to buy a house, so that was. I woke up the early, early this morning to go look at a place. Oh, we can talk about that for a little bit. We bought a oh. house this time last year. This, oh yeah. This literally, uh, we moved in on Halloween. Wow. Last year. How's it, how's it going? You oh, like it? Uh, okay. How's being, a, how's being a homeowner? So great. Buy all the insurances. Okay. <laughs> get, get them all. Get the five hundred dollar one for the year in case like your air conditioner goes out, your appliances, your refrigerator, or whatever goes out. Spend the okay. five. It's worth the five hundred for the year. Trust me. Yeah. I've replaced. Wait for it. The furnace and the air conditioner, and we need a new dishwasher. And wow. we didn't do the five hundred dollar oh, thing. Oh. No. So you can That's get it afterwards, bad. but you might as well just put it into your real yeah, your, your real or put it in there for you. Yeah, yeah, that's no, that's great advice because that's always been like one of my like real hesitations about buying a house. I'm like, I've always had a landlord, so if I need something fixed, I pick up a phone and he's mm-hmm, like, "All mm-hmm. right, just leave it me out," and it's <laughs> and it's fixed yeah. by the time I get home, and yeah. I don't have to pay for it. So I, I, that's good to know. Yeah, come here. <laughs> yeah. What? That's not true. What you said about putting in an after because if something breaks, it's already broken. No, if you, no, you get it because, okay, so you get the insurance. They come inspect everything, but if it does break, so like our furnace was actually crap. It was on its last leg, but it worked, right? So it passed yeah. inspection. So you can get the insurance, and then when it does crap out, you're fine because it passed inspection. <laughs> you want to say hi? Come here. <laughs> Stevie says she met you last year. She came in. Belfords. If you look at the screen, you can see who it is. <laughs> she has her hair in a towel. She doesn't. Oh, oh, that's she's, okay. She's standing in front of that camera, though. So. Sorry. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> because it wouldn't even cover it. They won't cover it now. Now they won't because it's after the fact. So I'm telling her to get it before the fact. You can't hear what she's saying. Is she buying a house? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be it. Sean's idea. <laughs> anyway, do 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 that. <laughs> I will, yeah. I will, no, I will. I will get all the insurances. How's the um, How's the it's market? It's really tough right now. How was the market down there? When you we. Oh my god, it's, it's a battle. So, like, if you don't get your offer in and get it accepted, pretty much on the day, you're not getting the house, right? Like that's that's how it yeah. was here. So we yeah. went through a couple of them before finally this one we loved right and we put in our offer and our realtor's like oh they accepted another one and we're like no can we counter it like come on and she's like well hold on let me see and so the paperwork hadn't been she hadn't gone all the way through yet and she hadn't signed it yet so she's like yeah right now so we're like what will it appraise at we're like we'll offer that and so we offered what it would appraise at and that's like, awesome cool that's awesome it's already up fifteen thousand from what we bought it at and like that's and that's the, the goal it's an investment you know um no i it's been really tough here uh i fell in love with a house about a month ago and i offered this is what the market like is like here okay <laughs> i offered thirty thousand dollars over asking price and mm-hmm. i wait the appraisal and i still didn't get the house <laughs> i am not even kidding and Why? we put we put, um, and p- part of the offer was I would beat anybody's offer by $2,500. And so, you like, still didn't get and it? I still didn't get the house. How? Because people are moving here and seriously, like $350,000 cash, like knocks out an, you know, anything. Mm-hmm. So it's like, if somebody walks up and's like, Hey, here's the money. Here you go. Paper sign. And you know, everything's done at like, you're just, you're fucked. And everybody's doing that. Like everyone's yeah. coming here to develop and, you know, to rent out. They finally, finally passed a law um, regulating the Airbnb thing. So here. you can't just so buy them up and rent them. Yeah. You can't just buy them up and, you know, rent them out, um, which is, which is great because I think that was, it was killing us for a long time. And it's awesome. Like 
you know, we were talking about Nashville's growth earlier. And when I say there's pros and cons, pros, everybody's homes are selling for like $150,000 more than what they're worth. So like <laughs> if has had a house, it's like fucking great. Like every, you know, like, but everybody that wants to buy a house is screwed. Yep. <laughs> and you, and you, hopefully you, they don't get screwed later. Exactly. And that's, right. that's what's terrifying. It's like, like the, I, I put an offer in this morning and I, I, I love the house. It checks off every single box. I want a full basement, un, like finished for Basements. my dog. What's that? I want a basement. <laughs> Never had a, oh yeah. Okay. Uh, I so, remember them from childhood. Do I, yeah. A lot of people say that and I, I forget that that's not a thing everywhere. Um, so I, I have two big dogs. I'm sure you've seen them all over Instagram and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would absolutely love to have a basement for them. And that's like their domain. Like they can just run outside. They can furniture, whatever, hop all over the couches, do whatever they want to do. Go crazy. It's your whole mug yeah, room. Go crazy. That's <laughs> your spot. And like, I would love to like buy some nice furniture for myself and it doesn't have claw marks all over it. That would be great for once in a <laughs> while. <laughs> so it's got a like full finished basement. It's got a big fenced in yard. Um, the kitchen's renovated, like everything's, it's just, it's a perfect house, but in reality, it's not worth what it's listed at. And I offered the listing price and it's like, if the bubble bursts, and I don't think that it's going to, I don't think it's going to here, but if no. the bubble bursts, I could be out of some money, you know, well, which you're, is you're not really in the long run. If you think about it, you're paying for it for 30 years, right? So yeah. within that 30 years, you know, I'm pretty sure the housing market's recovered at this point from yeah. 2008, it, but my realtor also thinks he thinks that even though he thinks it's just going to plateau, like the bubble's not going to burst. It's just going to kind of slow down for it's a little bit. It's already slowing down. I just saw about it like, my buddy in Texas. So one friend moved to Texas and he ended up in the same problem you were, are, mm-hmm. which is just like people just offering what above, above and beyond. And then also cash on top of that. Right. And just like, like wiping <laughs> out offers. Like, yeah, you're sh- <laughs> like he, he put in eight, uh, uh, eight different offers, like in a week, like, and just, just gone, gone, gone. Nope, nope, yeah. nope, 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 nope. The same day seeing like within, like at the house, like put in the offer now. Yeah. Right. Like, Gone. still gone yeah and then uh, the other one became a realtor because of it and uh, the texas market i think has cooled off quite a bit um, yeah because he's doing something else <laughs> <What>? <laughs> that's kind of the thing here i feel like ever especially people in the service industry everybody becomes a realtor <laughs> i think it's so funny i'm like all of it it's like serving bartending Real, real estate. Real estate. Yep. <laughs> I know several bartenders and servers who are realtors. Yeah, yep. which is like, you know, it's cool. And I mean, you know, obviously I think being a realtor takes a lot of, you know, time and dedication and, you know, you've got to, you've got to have like a you little bit. Hustle. Yeah, you really do. You've got to hustle a lot. And I think servers and boss. Yeah, they, they know that hustle more than probably anybody, like in any other. So it makes a lot of sense. You got to do open houses for other people because you don't yeah. have any <laughs> listings yet. You know. Like. Yeah, like even my realtor now, and I love, I mean, I love him. He was actually one of my, he was my boss. He was a managing partner at a steakhouse I worked in when I was like 20. And <laughs> they eventually realtor. left it for real estate, <laughs> and he's now my realtor, and I, I trust he's just a great guy. I love him. But like this morning, I felt terrible. He's like, uh, I really want to watch the Titans game, so can we go a little bit early? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> like I feel bad. Like I'm just taking up your Sunday because it's the only day I have off. Hey, um, the earlier the better, because you need to get that offer in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I've, I've actually, uh, uh, I don't even, I don't even have any wood to knock on, but I have, um. Had, I this, have high hopes this, for this. This is okay. It, it's approved. There, yeah. It's approved. There, uh, <laughs> there wasn't an offer yet. Um, so I think I'm the first and it's been on the market for about a week. So that's, oh. And, 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 oh. and in Nashville times, that's, that's a, a big good sign. Yeah. That's a good sign. What's so, wrong with it? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's a beautiful house. I'm like, I don't know. It's, but it, I will say it's in a neighborhood. That's not really, I feel like the neighborhood is actually the next one to start developing i feel like people are going to start moving out there it's a little bit further out um so i think maybe that's why it's not gone as quickly it's like where i live now houses are gone like that if they're reasonably priced and they look good they're it's gone. it's over it's gone well that's good um, that can work out then because you get a reasonable price mm-hmm. 
comparatively speaking, in an upcoming comparatively. neighborhood, which yeah, own, which I'll hopefully own. just yeah. you know here yeah. in a few years I'll sit you know hang out in it for like four or five years, sell it, and hopefully make a little money and spawn. You know, yeah, that's you, the goal. That's the goal. If you have a room, you might as well Airbnb it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not like the thought has not crossed my mind. But then I'm also now that I'm oh now that I'm in the hotel industry, so that's the thing. I um this so this is my second hotel. Man, Airbnb is like you don't talk about, about Airbnbs at work, like because <laughs> they're fucking you know. It's like, they are demon, demon they're, spawn they're, Airbnb. <laughs> They are the enemies of the hotel industry, and I love Airbnbs. That's my favorite way to travel. Like, I love that. You get to, like, hang out with the locals, and it's usually, like, really inexpensive, and you get to, you know, sometimes stay in a really cool place. And The fees are always surprising at checkout. That's the only thing I don't like. It's like, yeah. the price looks okay, and then you're like, 700 more dollars? I'm yeah. only staying for a weekend. <laughs> yeah. That's actually true. What is, what <laughs> is, what is all that? Yeah. <laughs> you said, yeah. You said two hundred dollars cool. a night. Now it's like three fifty a night. I'm so confused. <laughs> that is the, the you are that is very true. That I just you know I we'll it's see, the same of renting a car. Right? Like Oh my god, renting a car is I mm, it's like I, don't a, even, I hate renting cars. Nineteen ninety nine a day. Then why am I paying fifty six dollars a day? Oh my well, god. Well you see. <laughs> You know. I went to uh, I went to Costa Rica this past summer, and when I looked up car rental in Costa Rica, it was like two hundred dollars for the whole week. And when we got there, it was like six hundred bucks. I was so mad. And then I like I later heard that they kind of rip people off, yep. and they were like, "Yeah, mm -hmm. that's kind of a thing. They're gonna rip you off, and you just have to know how to kind of work with them or whatever." But yeah, six hundred bucks is what I ended up paying. It was worth it. I mean, you know, you need a car on vacation, but I mean, that's actually not that expensive, really. Anyway, but you think like so when I would go to Mexico and we'd mm -hmm. rent a car. So my sister had done it, and she's like, "Oh, they 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 just try to rape you." Like there's yeah. like yeah. they say, <laughs> "Oh oh, twenty dollars a day, sure, ha ha ha." Wait till you get there. Okay. Yeah. And then we, yeah, and then everybody speaks Spanish, and so I don't speak Spanish, and then I don't. <laughs> so you can't haggle. You're just like, no, like it's, but it's said on my reservation, man. He's speaking in an accent because somehow that's going to help them understand you. Yeah, <laughs> you don't understand, right. man. It says right here on the paper. <laughs> Let's see. Oh no, no, Gringo. <laughs> yeah, and you know that they. I mean, I'm sorry, but you know they know what you're saying. <laughs> like, they kind of just look at you. It's like no. It's nah. like, don't um, care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was, yeah, that's funny. But, $500 a day. Don't care. Yeah. <laughs> you want yeah. car or no car? <laughs> yeah. You want car, no car. You're stuck here. Because then you find your, like, what, like in Costa Rica, found myself fucking miles from the Airbnb because we took the airport shuttle out. And so it's like, well, you, you know, you either take the $500 a day fee or, I'm like, or you just stay here. You're just going to get out. You're stuck. Okay. We're stuck uh, at this hurts for the remainder of your trip. <laughs> <laughs> we, the Uber will be a hundred dollars just if you want. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Ooh. Nobody Ubers anymore, so it's always on a on the surge. It's kind of strange too, right? Like nobody Ubers anymore. Well, they they screwed over all the drivers, like. They just cut all their pay. Happens? Yeah, like they when Uber first started, because I knew some people who Ubered, and they loved it. They made really good money, and yeah. then they just slashed it. Like, and nobody tips really. Like I, I tried it for like I don't know two weeks just because I was doing locations, and so I'd be driving yeah. around anyway. So I was like, I'll oh, just you know whatever. Nobody ever it. tipped, man. Like ever. Like wow, yeah, that sucks. That really, I, I mean, that I, was originally I, the beauty of Uber. Was that you yeah. didn't have to tip, right? So it just stuck in people's minds and they just that you don't have to. Mm -hmm. And honestly, like it doesn't I don't I don't think I have um it might be that I don't have the notifications turned on my phone. But anytime that I do Uber, like the next time I open Uber, which sometimes is a month later, it's like tip so and so, and I'm like, oh my god, I never left that person a tip. <laughs> I can open this app, <laughs> and then I'm like, ah, there's ten dollars. <laughs> I feel so bad. So, I, but I, you know, it's funny because I didn't know that it, that all of that had happened, but a lot of my 
employees Uber to work. And for a while, every day, two of them were like two hours late. And I'd be like, what the fuck guys? Like, what are you doing? And they're like, we couldn't get an Uber. <laughs> <laughs> just like, like, my ride kept canceling. And I'm like, and, and there's just no solution. I'm like, I don't even know what to tell you. Cause our public transport here is all, it's awful. It doesn't exist. So it's like, they're I'm just that's like, a legitimate excuse. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> legitimate. And I'm like, I just don't know what to say. Cause I'm, I mean, I know that it's hard for me to get an Uber right now. I don't know what's going on. Why? No, there are no Ubers anywhere anymore. Um, but yeah, you can't really, you can't really do anything about it. You know, no. I'm like, yeah. Become an Uber <laughs> driver yourself. I don't know. I guess. Yeah. And, well, yeah, I guess. I don't know. I've thought about it. I've actually thought about Ubering before, you know, just a, a little extra cash here and there. And I always thought it would be kind of fun, but I just don't, I know that I would never turn that app on. I, wanna, I know. That no, would. it sucked. Um, <laughs> 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 I wanted to do a thing where it was just like, tell me crazy stories, like a free ride, you know, just I'm turn on the camera and like, tell me the crazy, and it's call it like ride share confessions or something yeah. like that. I was like, tell me, tell me your deepest, darkest secret. <laughs> you get a free ride. <laughs> isn't there, wait, isn't that a, is there a show like called like Taxi Confessions yeah, or something? Yeah, uh-huh. like but, but I just was. to be a thing. Yeah, I actually mm-hmm. really liked that show. But yeah, spin it off and, you know, like ride share mm-hmm. confessions. Like, yeah. <laughs> my buddy, my buddy's actually the ride share foodie. You ever heard of the ride share foodie? No. Uh, look him up. He was in the military and then when he got out he decided to uber and lyft and he uber and lifted across all 49 states he hasn't made it to hawaii yet because of the pandemic but he did all 49 states and food blogged across the country wow um just meeting that's locals so in the car cool. and being like hey where should i eat and so they'd tell him where to eat and he'd go there that is so cool so now he's got an app that's coming out idea. he's gonna be on the show he's coming to visit I've never actually met him in person, but he's coming to visit oh, okay. uh, in a couple of weeks, and we're going to collaborate on something. That's uh, that's awesome. That's really cool. That's a really really cool idea. What a and what a great way to like. I don't know. That's driving cross country is just you know. I think everybody kind of has that little that little dream, you know. And that's a that's a really cool way to do it. Right. What and, is that? And you couldn't do it without Uber, right? So I mean, Uber no. made that possible. Yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. Are they? Is he a? Is he, does he have a podcast or is he on a, is it his show? He, like, how does he, what is this it? It's all across the social media. So I oh, yeah, okay. post on Facebook so like and Instagram and he blogs. Yeah, he's got a, oh, okay, cool. he's got an app coming out with all his recommendations, like where to like locals eat and like stuff like that. So that's really cool. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to follow him for sure. Cause that's a really, that's a really great idea. You hear that Kreskin? I just gave you a huge shout out there, Mr. Kreskin. Yeah. <laughs> the ride share booty. Check him out. He's cool. <laughs> yeah that's really cool <laughs> yeah oh uh, man so i'm gonna have to come to nashville and do some restaurants at some point i'm going to texas in december oh sweet what part of texas are you going to we're going to nashville or not nashville <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're, we're going to austin <laughs> and to dallas area and doing okay one barbecue restaurant and the rest are pretty much like farm to table restaurants they're all chef awesome that yeah that's really cool that'll be fun i've actually um i've not been to austin i've been to dallas a few times but i've always heard that austin and nashville are very similar cities they're very, very close very to each other too i didn't realize how close they were they're only about like an hour and a half from each other two hours mm-hmm. yeah yeah that'll be fun that'll be a good trip and i've never hung I'm out sure. in the hung out in texas so yeah <laughs> do i have to- i'm sure it'll be do i need cowboy boots i don't i don't know no oh my gosh i tell everybody that (laughs) i'm like it's so funny when people come here they all like anybody in cowboy boots doesn't live here (laughs) it's like tourists (laughs) think they have to it's like the tourists they do here and they're like i have to buy some boots and i have to wear some cowboy with them and i have to put on a cowboy hat and i'm like why (laughs) who decided this i don't know like like, who told you this was our like uniform this is so strange and i mean i get it it's a music thing but i (laughs) it's like i mean gosh you know we there's a lot more here than just country music. Not that that's not a really cool part of this city, but yeah, everybody. Uh, oh, you're, everybody in you're really ruining my day because up until what? this conversation, I was planning on coming to Nashville. But first, I was going to make a stop at the store. 
I was going to buy some cowboy boots and get my hat. And I was going to come over to Nashville and I was going to take a poop and listen to some really good music in the bathroom. <laughs> you can still do all those things. And honestly, like, you'll, you'll fit in with a huge part of the people that are here. But I will say, you can't buy the boots before you come to Nashville. You have to go to Broadway. And buy you have to buy there. an insanely overpriced pair of cowboy boots. Okay, okay. Then you have to go to the next door honky tonk, <laughs> sit in the bathroom, listen to the guitarist. <laughs> Serenade your, me. Yeah, yeah, while you poop. While I poop. And then... Oh, and man, then that is the true poop. Nashville experience <laughs> if you're a tourist. <laughs> apparently, yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm if you're a tourist, if you live there, nobody has any idea that's happening. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm t- well, I mean, seriously, like, I, I don't know. Have you seen the photos of Broadway? Like, it's it really, it went viral after, like, COVID and pa- the pandemic and stuff. Have you seen all that? No. So, like, the first weekend that we opened like kind of opened up, like everything went on lockdown, just like everybody else did. And the very first weekend that Nashville decided to open the, you know, doors of restaurants and bars again, it was like, nothing was happening. Like the Broadway was just loaded with people and oh oh my God, like, yeah. And and we're like, you know, all of us that live here are just like, fuck, because we, yeah, that's exactly when I came to Savannah, I was Honestly, I was shocked. I was like, no one's wearing a mask. It's like nothing's happening down here. Like, this is so crazy. And I was like, everywhere I went, I was like putting my mask on and people were looking at me weird. And I'm like, do you guys all know what's going on? Like, I'm like this is crazy. Like, what the fuck? We were only really shut down for like six weeks, maybe two well, months. Same. same. We, I think we shut down. I mean, the day that I, I actually lost my job. Um, and... What, that was March 17th, and I think we officially started opening things back up in, like, early May, June. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like, roughly a month, maybe a little, maybe more. Um, Jordan went back to work the beginning of June. I went back to work, like, mid-June. It's, it's, it's crazy. And it was just and, nuts, dude. There was, like, all the way to Tybee Island, all the way down to the bridge, right? Fucking just cars uh, blind. All Like, you could not get into Savannah. You could definitely couldn't get to Tybee. And like, yeah, all the just like just gridlocked hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of cars just yeah. stuck <laughs> like oh, all the way down, to- all the yeah. way down Broad Street, all the way down to Tybee. Like, and it was, no. Yeah, it was really frustrating. And I'm sure it was frustrating for you guys because I know like living here, you know, or like being in a city that our restrictions were lifted so quickly and there were so many other places, you know, like fucking New York and Chicago and LA and like all of them came here yeah. and it just, it was just, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's like, guys, like you're kind of missing the fucking point. Like just be, you know, just because we're open doesn't mean you come and just like infiltrate our city. I thought we were opening to like, be like, okay, so everybody here can go to the beach. Right. Like right. I didn't know we were like opening the state to like, the country. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But and that's, that's exactly that's what happened what here. And now, and now that COVID is not over by any means, but now that restrictions have lifted and we're kind of getting back to a sense of normalcy. If you go to Broadway on a Friday or Saturday night, you will, you can't move the, the, I mean, it's, it's a part of the reason that a lot of people don't go there is because it's just claustrophobia. Like I went to go see Helanis Morissette a couple weekends ago um at the arena here and i had to walk through broadway to get there what <laughs> she just yeah. me. Alana. Oh, yeah. Alana. oh my god it was fucking and awesome. you was and cool. you bravo you. Yeah. Yeah. i'm happy <laughs> so you got great. to go see Alanis morissette <laughs> yeah it was really it was really great i really i really it was really fun um but as i was walking across the street it was just the most stressful 15 minute walk i've had in a really long time and i was like this is why i don't do this like i was just like freaking out everybody's just Oh, just packed in like sardines. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that'll be your Nashville experience. I work in a bar it's, too. So like bathroom. very crowded all the time. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I've, I've had COVID twice for sure. Really? Like, and I think maybe we even had it in March, like before that, like, because wow. we both had colds like forever, like for like a solid month leading up to yeah. like the 17th. Right. And so we were even out on our birthday, like. On like the twelfth of March, like oh, it's just still all stuffy and like uh oh. yeah. And then they're like, oh, world shut down. I'm like oh, okay. And then our colds finally went away. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, and yeah, then right I, after everybody went back to work, like one at a time, like everybody had it, right? Like, yeah. I actually did. I mean, I may have had, honestly, I may have had it before I knew that I had it, but I did, I had I it. I think for most sure. people probably did that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, cause it's, I mean, I know when I got it in November, you know, if obviously if it wasn't a the thing, second time if, was worse. Oh, really? Yeah. So the first oh. time was like a day of like, man, this feels weird. I and, didn't feel weird. Yeah. And I then the I second didn't. time I actually lost my sense of taste. And that was like, wow, this is, oh. weird. this is the craziest no, so shit lost, ever. Like what? It was. World? Yeah. <laughs> I lost my sense of taste and smell, but like feeling wise, I didn't ever feel bad necessarily. Like I was kind of tired and I felt like a little off, but like, I never really felt that sick. It was, but when my sense of taste and smell went away, that's when I knew I had it. I was like, that's, I was trying, uh, eggnog. That was, that's how I knew. Eggnog. I picked up a glass of eggnog Thanksgiving night to drink it and I couldn't taste it. I was like, whoa. <laughs> I stuck and my then, face in garlic, like jar, yeah. like garbage. I was just like, nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> this is crazy. After I couldn't taste the eggnog the next morning, I woke up and my roommate had actually pulled laundry out of the dryer. And I was like walking to the kitchen and I was like, hey, I was like, put that in my face. <laughs> and I was like, I can't smell anything. And I went straight to the coffee pot and I was like, fuck. <laughs> and I immediately went to get tested. I had it. Yep. And then I sat on my ass for 10 days feeling like a leper. <laughs> Just... I laid on my floor. It was nice. Yeah, laid on the floor. I just laid on the floor for like a week. The whole ten days. Yeah. That's funny. I sat on the couch and when I could when the garlic burned my nose again, I was so happy. I was like, oh my God, yeah. it burns. Oh yeah. Good. Well, did you how fast did your sense of chase and smell come back? Because mine didn't come back for like two months. Uh I smoke a lot of weed and uh, um so yeah. and I just had this conversation with somebody the other day that and the, there was one day that I ate a bunch of gummies. <clears throat> and mm -hmm. that during that time I was, I was eating an orange and I was like, Oh my God, I can taste the orange. And I could like, and for a very, and I could, and the next day I woke up and it was gone again, but I got my taste back like immediately and my smell back like immediately. Mm -hmm. Um, pretty, really quick, like a couple days after I wow. started feeling better. That's um, good. But Maybe I saw like this little weird residual cold when I could taste the cold again, you know, like that weird cold yeah. flavor. I was like, all right, I can taste. Like, yeah. yeah. Someone give me a yeah. cigarette so I know that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, that's that weird cold scent smell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, that's funny. But then uh, yeah. somebody else told me that uh, they hadn't got their, they had it and their smell was gone still for like two weeks still. And then one day they ate a bunch of edibles. And their taste came back like that night and it was back ever since then. So just throwing it I, out there. <laughs> I, guess, I mean, it wouldn't surprise and, and they me. Didn't, they were eating CBD out of it. Yeah, so go, you know, if anybody can't smell, just go eat fuck CBD gummies or something. To, or just, it yeah. It might help. Either way, it'll relax you. I mean, I kind of <laughs> wonder because I eat edible. I don't smoke much weed anymore, but I eat edibles like pretty frequently. Like I always have them on hand and – just at night, you know, help me go to sleep or whatever. And I kind of wonder if that, maybe that's why my, maybe that's why COVID wasn't so bad for me. Who knows? There's so many theories out yeah, there. There's but, a million. You know, but could never know. I, could I'm be. always pro cannabis though. So whatever. Oh, yeah, can't sure. hurt. The point uh -huh. is it can't hurt. It's not going to hurt you. <laughs> it literally can't hurt anything. It does nothing but good things. That's what I don't understand. <laughs> like it does All good nothing things. Good. All good All things, good things, Mary Jane. <laughs> it might make you a little lazy, but that's all right too. You know, we we I feel like we deserve to be a little lazy sometimes. I'd rather be a little lazy than drunk and rambunctious. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Depending on the day, <laughs> sometimes I like to be drunk and rambunctious. Depends on if I'm at Atlanta's Morsey concert or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How was it? How was the concert? Oh my god, it was fucking great. She is incredible. Like. She, her voice is still amazing. She's, it was so much fun. It was awesome. I still remember her from, uh, when she was on, you can't do that on television when she was just a little girl. Oh yeah. She, so, uh, what was really cool actually is, um, her intro to like coming before she came out on stage, they, it was like this compilation of all of her TV appearances, things said about her Saturday, Saturday night live skits about her, like all of that stuff. And, 
Uh, that was the, one of the one clips. Of the, she gets yeah. slimed. She gets slimed. Yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. But it was like a really brief <laughs> shot of just like the slime, and then it was. It was really cool though. She is. She's awesome. There's a documentary out. I hear about her. Uh huh. On Netflix, oh. I think. Yeah. Oh shit! I just I planned your that. night, didn't I? <laughs> you did. Yeah. <laughs> I've actually got dinner plans. Uh, but when I come back, I will definitely be falling asleep to the Atlantis Morissette document documentary for sure. Go. And if, and if and you make it through that, feel free to watch my show, Beyond the Check, Beyond Our Corona Edition, now streaming. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd love to. This has been fun. Yeah. Bravo. Good chat. Good chat. Very, yeah, for sure. Very inspiring to everybody, too. I don't know. I hope. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Be a leader, Stevie. Be a leader. I think that's important. You know, I mean, hospitality is not going anywhere. There, you know, and it's it's provided a. Um, Be a functional family, not a dysfunctional family. Exactly, <laughs> and I, I mean, yeah, they're going to be dysfunctional sometimes, and you know, you're. I think, I think one of the reasons that you become family with people is that you really do trauma bond. I mean, during you know, and, and <laughs> you do know, hundred percent too. I mean, you're like, if you're in the shits on a Saturday night, like all you have is each other. Like it's, and then you come out and you're like, fuck yeah, we did it again. You did it again. Why do we keep doing this to ourselves? But we did it again. <laughs> um, and then you and, go out and you talk about it all night. Long. <laughs> yeah, and then you go out and you talk about it, and then you. you know you drink about it and then it's play do it all again the next day but um yeah and I, you know i think that it's such a, i don't know i love the industry it's such a cool industry it's it's you know we've met each other through you make so many connections you meet so many people and what i love about it is that like it's not a one size fits all job like everybody or no it is a one size fits all job it's like everybody can kind of did i say that right i think i did but everybody like everybody Anyone can, can do it all kinds of people from like, yeah. And some people can do it better than others. And, you know, at certain levels, people across does. the world are all doing the same thing in different societies and different cultures, exactly. but essentially they're doing the same thing. They're serving exactly. people. food. Exactly. And there, and I mean, it's, it's spawned, you know, server life. Like it's a fucking hashtag. It's a whole thing. <laughs> and it's like people, it's like this, like kind of, like fight club kind of feeling. It's like everybody fucking has these like little secrets and inside jokes. You know what I mean? Like everybody's part of this. Yeah. Now if we could just teach them to balance their checkbooks and be responsible with their money, they could all yeah. do great things. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously you guys make so much money out there. Start saving. You know what? Yeah, for sure. Like that's, that is actually one thing I do appreciate about the salary is that it actually taught me to budget money because, you know, when, it, when I would go into work and make 600 bucks on, you know, one shift, I'd be like, oh, fuck it. I can spend 400. I still have 200 left over and I know I'm going to do it again tomorrow mm-hmm. night. And it's like, what the fuck are you doing? That's not, <laughs> that's not responsible. Easy come, easy go. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, I, I will always continue to, to leave because I feel I feel like the hospitality provides a lot for people, but like people out there, patrons, customers, guests, whatever you want to call them. But I think it provides even more for the people who actually work in it. And that's one of the reasons that I, that I wanted to, you know, move up the ladder and maybe someday I'll have my own place and I'll get to just, you know, have this. I'd like to, my goal is like one day I want to have a unicorn restaurant, legitimately a unicorn (laughs) restaurant. Where everybody is treated with respect and everybody has fun. Is the building and, shaped like a unicorn? Yeah. Like, well, like unicorn, like, you know, it's hard to find. With it's, it's a little easier to find it. If you heard about Sean Brock, like he's allowing a, like meditations for his staff and stuff now. Like they have like meditation hours and shit. <laughs> yeah. Because it's like, hey, take care of yourself. Like you've got to put your oxygen mask on first, right? Like fucking take care of yourself before. Trying to take else. care of everyone else. Right. Right. And, you know, this is coming from someone who just worked a 90 hour week, but it's yes, all right. I was going to say, <laughs> maybe look in the mirror and remind yourself every once in a while. <laughs> every once in a while, it's good to sleep. But mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I have fun doing it. So it doesn't always feel like work. No. Oh, yeah. was, Stevie, it's been lovely catching up with you. It's been lovely to catch up with you as well. I'm glad we finally made time. Yay. I know. <laughs> Yay. Well, let's, you, uh, let's do it again sometime. For sure. You're definitely going to come back and check back in on how it's going. You're not even open yet, so I'm sure you'll have some stories to tell. 
Many. Many. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, darling, everyone, the lovely Stevie Harris. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for having me. Seriously. I hope it was really nice to get to talk to Jordan, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> Tell well, her I said hey. <laughs> well, then we'll try to get in here next time. I mean, she's going to be on the podcast here at some point. Sometimes I just want her to come home and she's just going to complain about work afterwards. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, just turn on that. Like, I'm, I'm sure she does it every once in a while. I'll just turn the mic on and yeah. just like let her talk. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's the actually- plan. <laughs> yeah, that's actually kind of, that's, I'm sure that'd be really productive for everybody. <laughs> that's awesome. Saves money right. on the therapist. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, it was really good to talk to you. You too, darling. Have a wonderful dinner. Thank and, you. And uh, I hope you find that Alanis Morissette documentary. Cause yeah, I will, for we're sure. We're going to watch I'll it later, too. So we'll All talk right. about that next time, too. Yeah, that sounds great. Awesome. That's great. All, All right, right. Don. Bye. Oh, bye. Have a good night. Bye. You bye. too. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> I'm doing a thing. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening to this episode of Beyond the Check podcast. Uh, We will see you next time. Hear you next time. Cheers. Cheers.